بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh welcome again to the the program uh, islamic awakening uh, by mbtv and in this uh, program in this episode we will be discussing about the power of dua so we have a very prominent qari uh, imran khan here our brother from canada welcome to the show again Thank and you please uh, could you tell us the power of dua Dua is a very powerful thing, but very powerful tool. So, could you please uh, tell us uh, sure. more about that? Shalom. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulil amin. Nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Ballagha al-risala wa adda al-amana wa nasaha al-ummah. Fajazaa Allahu khayra ma jaza bihi nabiyan an ummatih. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, indeed, it is a very uh, important topic. Uh, in the next few minutes, uh, what uh, we will discuss is first the definition of dua and we'll talk a little bit about some of the etiquettes of dua and then we'll take it to the next level where how and when the dua is uh, accepted, what are the different timings and so on and so forth inshallah. Mm-hmm. So let us first uh, begin with uh, what is dua. Uh, in essence, dua is nothing but talking to the Creator, talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you express anything and everything. But in order for us to do that, we have been given guidelines by none other than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has taught us that first thing we do is praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, I would like to spend a couple of minutes. If I want something to be done from you or from anybody, the first thing I'm going to say, MashaAllah, doctor, you know, you have an excellent personality. You know, you are looking fantastic. Your clothes are awesome. And I just keep talking anything and everything about you, which is good. Everything. So what will happen is you will become very, very pleasing. And imagine that the creator of this universe, you keep praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the praise has been mentioned. The first surah we have, the first chapter in the Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All praise is to the Lord's, is to the Lord of the universe. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need our praises, but we do it. Exactly. Because we need it. We, we are need in need. It. We are in debt. We are the poor. Exactly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all rich. Huwa al-ghani, nahnu al-fuqara. You know, this is how it is basically. And uh, when we do the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's also mentioned in numerous places that yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wal ard. That whatever is on heavens and earth, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, interestingly, we have been given the title of best of creation. Uh, Why? Because... We have the faculty of choosing what is right and wrong. And when we choose what is right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very pleased. So uh, that ability has been described in uh, Surah Al-Shams. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا The ability of you know, choosing right and wrong. Similarly, when we make the tasbih, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is in complete satisfaction with the one who makes dua for him. Moving further, the dua is also one of the best weapons for a believer, for a mu'min. Because you see, we may come across different types of situations and the only weapon we have to feel satisfied, to feel strong, to feel at peace is dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that قَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ He says that, you know, if you want to uh, make dua, you just call upon me and I will answer you. Now here opens a new door, a new chapter where we can uh, talk about how and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. Now if I make dua, oh Allah, please give me Mercedes Benz. Okay. Now that is a dua, that's good. Okay. But we have to follow certain guidelines. As I said, the first thing that we have done is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The second thing that we have to do is to send salutations on Prophet Muhammad Once we do these two things, now we are ready to make dua. Okay. The third thing is the time of dua. Yes, we can make dua at any given time, but there is a very important aspect. So many times we uh, do not manage our time properly in terms of uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or making dua. I'll give you a very uh, practical example. You go to the masjid and uh, I don't think it's not just common here but anywhere else. Uh, if you can uh, take a look at what happens between adhan and iqama. Some people, mashallah, they make nawafil, they pray nafil uh, prayers. Some people, you know, make sunnah. Some people, mashallah, they recite the Quran. Yet, there are other people who will be talking and waiting for the iqama to happen. Right, right. Okay. So, this is one of the most acceptable times where the dua will be accepted. So, we should try our best to utilize this time between adhan and iqama. So, that is a very, very important thing. And it should start right from the adhan, answering the adhan. The adhan is being called and you prepare yourself. Come to the thought that you know you are getting ready to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also if we want something I'm going to talk first human to human yeah very simple logic it's not complicated if I want something um, let's say that you know we are on air right now and uh, I have some urge to drink a sip of water so um, I'm going to say can you please get me a glass of water you know, that's not right. The response will not be very favorable. Exactly. So that's that's not uh, proper. So you have to say, would you mind uh, getting me a glass of water? Would it be possible if I can... With your generosity. Exactly. You know, use kind words, gentle words, and be humble because you're requesting something from somebody else. Do I basically a request? Yes. Now people misunderstand, and especially the teenagers and the youth, they fight and complain especially to the elders, sometimes to the parents, to the teachers. I talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not listen to me. I failed. I did not get good marks. Well, you cannot do that. So we have to follow certain guidelines. And also Allah has people who help themselves. True. So we Definitely. have to do, hard, do the hard work and then, of course, we'll do, I will be. Exactly. Uh, and it, we have the ayah, in Tansurullah in Surkum. aqdamakum. It's very, very common misunderstanding among many people that you know okay I have to get my dua answered immediately and also another thing is that even if we are not granted in this world inshallah yamal qiyama Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give because that day Allah will say he was praying so hard but Allah didn't give so today I'm going to give him that's what I was going to come to next yeah very good that there is an ayah that talks about asa an takrahu shay'un wa huwa khayrun lakum perhaps you know uh, there is something that you don't like, but it is better for you. Like you make dua, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows what's best for you and when the appropriate time is. Yes, He has said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِ لَكُمْ But He is the one who decides. When to give. When to give. And it will be granted. Yes. Somehow. In some form or the other. And if not, as you have rightly said, that it will be preserved on the day of And perhaps, you know, the Yawm al uh, most of us will be possibly hoping that had, had Allah not uh, granted my wishes during in the world, because we are going to, going to get here more. Exactly. So there's at no point in time we should lose hope of Allah. Definitely. SubhanAllah. Talking about hope, Surah Zumar. And I, I feel like, you know, reciting this uh, ayah, it is a very, very powerful ayah that uh, uplift the iman of people who uh, lose hope. And uh, it goes something like this. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا the translation basically 
from Surah Al-Zumar. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنْفِهِمْ Tell to the believing people who transgress upon themselves. And don't lose hope. لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ From the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Very Allah, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all sins. إِنَّهُ وَالْغَفُورُ رَحِيمٌ Verily He is the most of forgiving. Never, and most, never lose hope. Never. And never lose hope, exactly. Uh, most of the time what happens is the teenagers, the young ones, the youth, because of peer pressure, because of what happens around them, uh, they keep asking, they keep doing things, and they don't get their wishes granted immediately. So sometimes they go into a mental block, saying, you know what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not answering me, so I don't want to continue anything. That's a wrong attitude. Okay, we should have a positive attitude. It applies in every phase of our life. You know, you have to have patience at the same time. In Allah ma'a sabirin. Allah. Very right. In Allah ma'a sabirin. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the ones who are patient, persevere. And you know, we have this surah that uh, talks about speaking the truth and being patient, which is coming directly from Surah Al-Asr. says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ So it is teaching us how to be truthful and patient. So we can tell the students, we can tell the younger ones that yes, continue to make dua and be sincere in your dua and be patient and speak the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely answer. So our... it is a very powerful weapon and it is always powerful. We should not forget that it is a powerful thing. Oh yes. And it's so powerful. So the power of dua we are talking about. Can you please, yeah, yes. go ahead. Uh, the next thing that I want to mention is the most acceptable time is while we are in the state of humility while we are making such that humble huh? yes while we are the most acceptable time is during such that so when the person is in sujood he's very close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as i mentioned towards the beginning then he can start off by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending salutations to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then thereon he can start mentioning whatever he needs thank you very much uh, ari imran khan May Allah bless you for the invaluable knowledge you have given to us. So we'll take a small break from here and then we'll come back again. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.